Okay, now we're going to use the Vernier pH probe to create a titration curve. You're gonna need a few things so let's get it together, alright? Okay, so open up Logger Pro and notice how it knows the probe is hooked up. Nice. Rinse the probe and place it in your sample. Make sure the stir bar is in your sample and turn on the stir plate. Not too much though, that's not gonna work. pH probes don't take kindly to excessive vortexes, splashing and air bubbles. Now you gotta make sure the software is set up and ready to go. Click on experiment, data collection, and change time base to events with entry. You're gonna need to fill in the boxes that appear with the correct volume units and stuff so your graph looks right. Done. Now you're ready to rock, well, almost. Check out these areas of the screen, they're important. Especially the keep button, you're gonna need that soon. Now do a preemptive mod on the graph by right clicking on the graph and selecting graph options. Check off connect points and check on point protectors. You're done here. If you want, you can change the scale on the x axis now or you can auto scale later. It's sweet to see your results scaled as you go. But I'm not gonna force it on you. Alright, now it's go time. Press collect and notice the keep button is now lit up. Press it and enter the amount of titrant you've added to your sample. 0.00. Right. Now add some titrant, maybe a mil also, but make sure you know the exact amount to two decimal places. Check out the pH as you add titrant, you don't want it to freak out on you when you don't expect it. Press keep again and enter the amount of titrant you added. Don't slack off on this or you'll just end up having to redo the whole experiment. Oh, and don't press stop either, you're not done yet. You can see 0.75 mils of titrant was added here. Repeat and keep. Now be sure to enter the total amount of titrant for each data point. You'll need to do some complicated addition to figure that out. If you screw this up, you can fix it, so no need to worry. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Keep entering data and keep an eye on the curve. At some point it'll start going nuts and you'll have to slow way down when adding titrant. Try single drops or even half drops. Getting the steep points shows pro technique and gets you sweet results. Once the pH change slows down again, you can add larger volumes of titrant until it levels off. Get a few more points and press stop. If it looks like what you see here, thumbs up. Now it's kinda hard to find the equivalence point volume with this curve, so here's how to get a better idea with some first year math. Don't worry, the computer does it for you. Click on data, new calculated column. In the first box, name the function, say, first derivative. Give it a short name too. Now press the functions button, find calculus, and select derivative. Now press variables and hit pH. That's it. To see the new curve. Click on pH on the Y axis and select first derivative. There it is. Join those points together by selecting connect points in graph options. If you did a killer job and got several points in the steep region, the top of the curve will be close to the equivalence point. For an even better indication of the equivalence point, a second derivative is better. Go through the same procedure as when calculating the first derivative, but this time, select second derivative. Call it up on the screen and check it out. The equivalence point volume is where the line crosses the x axis. Zoom up for a better view by changing the scale on the x axis. Record the equivalence point volume, print your graphs, and you're done. Clean up and be sure to rinse the probe and put the probe back in the storage buffer. Now you know how to create a titration curve using a Vernier pH probe.